Okay, good morning, everybody. Everybody's well. Happy Thursday for those of you who are live. Happy whatever day a week it is for you. Whenever you're here, thanks for being here. However you're here. And if you're new, welcome. You never have to start from the beginning. You can always just jump in wherever you are. It's an honor to have you. We've been talking about this concept of uh, effort and results way of seeing the world, building new neural maps in our minds so that we, we don't allow ourselves to, to play towards the results. Now, we're trying to uncover why that's such a problem. And yesterday, we began the conversation of talking about, or we continued the conversation of talking about how when you're encountering something, whether it's a test or whatever it is that you're doing, although it doesn't seem like it, if you go into like the, if you split the hair, if you will, the difference between saying this thing that I'm doing, I want to use as a method to bring out me versus this thing that I'm doing, I want to use to accomplish the thing, right? It doesn't, it, it, it feels like the same. It's not the same. When you're flying in an airplane and everything is sky, it feels like the same to go a hundred, you know, degrees right or a hundred degrees left. It's the same thing. It's just blue. What's the difference? I'm coming out of the airport in California. And what's the difference if the nose of the plane is facing a little bit this or a little bit that? What's the big deal, whether I, I'm on runway one or runway two, and I'm a little bit to the east, a little bit to the west, a little bit to the north, a little bit to the south. It's not a big deal when you, when you pull out of, um, out, of, out of the airport in California. But if you leave LAX and the nose of the plane is a little bit to the, to the south, you're going to end up in, in North Carolina, not in JFK which is a big deal if you live near JFK. So if you wake up and this happened once, I remember I was flying back from, you know, Spain, I think like a couple of years ago. And they're like, you know, like in the last half an hour, like, oh, by the way, we're landing in Newark. I'm like, what? You're landing in Newark? Like, I don't live near Newark. I, this plane was supposed to go to JFK. The traffic in JFK is too long. We got rerouted. Um, we're going to be landing in Newark. I'm like, that's a big deal for me. It's not a big deal for you because you're coming from Spain. Yeah, from Spain to America, the difference between Newark and JFK is very small. But for me, that's a huge difference. I'm not going to Newark. And thank God, in the last minute, JFK opened up and we ended up in JFK. It doesn't seem like a big deal. It's a big deal. The difference between saying, I want this result because I want to achieve the result. And I want this result because I want to bring the best out in front out in me. It doesn't seem like a big deal when you're going through it, but it's a big deal in life. It's a big deal over a decade. The difference between a student that walks in day one to whatever school they're in and thinks, how do I pull the best out of me and use subjects to get that? And there was a student that's like, how do I get the A? They seem like the same kid. They're both taking the same test. They're two totally different focuses. They're, in, they're, they're on planes heading in different directions. And when you look at life from a place of results and we're playing towards the results, then what happens is we go after results because we buy into the fact that results are important, get those results and realize this isn't that great. How come I'm not more satisfied or miss those results and convince ourselves that the reason why I'm not satisfied is because I don't have the results. But either way, you stay in the box called results. But the minute you say to yourself, what results? Those are just here to bring out the best that's within me. I don't care about results. I care about taking that potential that's within me called my soul and bringing it out into the world. That feeling of bringing the soul out into the world that takes place in part. When you exert every ounce of your effort over the world around you for good purposes, that feeling is what satisfies us. And sometimes you stumble upon it as you get a result. 
But if you're focused and you're, you understand the difference between being results driven and effort driven, and you say to yourself, I'm not doing this for the result. I'm doing this for me, not to take, but to exert that feeling, the battle of self, to exert my, to, to exert my, I don't want to say dominance, but over myself, not over my environment. Once you shift, once you shift, then you stop comparing yourselves. You stop comparing yourself to somebody else. I want to read you an email if I can find it as I'm talking. It really touched me, this email, because this person is, first of all, very attuned. If I can find it, it'll be, here it is, I got it. This person happens to be a very smart person who's very on. I'm not going to say her name. Hi, Charlie. Love the class. Thank you very much. Going all in on the inner battle and that's the win. Listen to what she writes. Because of my mental health challenges, I don't have the typical outcomes that my peers do. I have, I have to put a lot more effort into the day-to-day -day stuff to manage my mental health. And these last few classes have helped me shift my perspective and feeling like I've lost at life. Listen to what she's saying. To feeling like I've lost at life. To recognizing all the wins that happen within me that other people will not see. Do you hear that? That's it. So I'll read it again. I don't have the typical outcomes that my peers do. Da, da, da. I read, and these classes, okay, I've shifted my perspective from feeling like, I, like I've lost at life to recognizing all the wins that happen within me. This is what it's about. This email, I'm like, hello. As soon as we get out of the little bubble called results, that little bubble that they put us in, it's no one's fault. No one's trying. It's just life. We live in a material world. It's just reality. You need to eat. You need to sleep. You need to drink. You need to realize that we live in a world that has, that has dull instruments for measuring us. The people that measure us are humans. They can't see past the surface. They don't even try some most of the time. So they create dull instruments. And the instrument that is mostly used is comparisons. They stick people into a room and they compare them. They put them in a race. They put them on a court. It's fine. I'm not judging it. I'm just calling it out. It is what it is. If me and you live our lives in that bubble, we will never feel fully satisfied. That's not how a bubble works. Chase your whole life. Never appreciate what you have because what you have is only good in comparison to what somebody else has. And worse, and worse, when you achieve, when you focus on the result and you get the result and you feel like, wait, I'm more than that. You think it feels good to study for 10 minutes and get an A? You think that feels good? You know what feels good? Sitting in front of a test and studying your brains out and finding a piece of yourself that you never knew you had before. And walking into that test and not even caring. That's what feels good because that, that lasts. That's yours forever. That's yours way after the semester ends. Or way after you graduate and you go to work and someone's like, yeah, I don't really care what you got in your junior year like you're you're working now okay. like i i appreciate that you graduated summa cum laude that's beautiful wonderful yeah you're an associate now you're like what do you what 
What are you talking about? But I, I, I achieved the result. And I was like, yeah. Don't matter. A person graduates from that and says, I changed the person. I overcame my challenges. Who cares what my peers are doing? This is how you get set free. This is how you get set free. You build a neuro city in your brain that is so excited to bring out the strength from within that is so hopeful that it is looking forward to the person that you're going to become in the future because of how you are dealing with the present that can almost taste the inner evolution taking place when you grapple with things that are difficult when you look out at results that you're after and that almost stares at the results and all the people waiting by the finish line and clapping and looking at like with a little like okay it's nice i'll take it i'll take it from anywhere it's not nothing but I ran this race in life, not so that someone pats me on the back. And if nobody's around, it still will be okay. Because the battle that I fight every day is the battle within me. It's the voice that says you're not enough. And I look and go, yeah, I don't think you know me. I'm a piece of God. That's pretty good. It's that voice that says you don't have like everybody else has. They're ahead of you on the race of life. And you look and go, what race of life? There is no race in life. The only race in life is against self. And when we're battling things that seem normal to other people, we don't feel less. The idea of less and more doesn't even come into our minds because less means I'm comparing myself to you versus I am on this earth for a reason and I've been given this challenge for a reason. And I know in my core that if I fight hard and, and I'm creative and I am hopeful and optimistic and I use my strength to do the things that I have to figure out, I'm going to live a fully satisfied life regardless of whether the person before me or next to me has the same results that I have. That's living a spiritual life. That's starting to look at the world and going, I want to be an inner person. You see people, they're wonderful. They're amazing, but they're outer people. They're out and it's, we're ha it's getting worse to be honest, because there was once a time where you had inner space. Like there was once a time where you went into your house and your house was inner. So when you got dressed in the morning, you went outside and you were outer. And when you got home at night, you went inside and you were inner. Those days are over. Those days are over. And there are people that are training their brain since they're little children neuroplasticity neuro maps in their brains that says if you have any experience in your life the experience is only valuable to the extent in which you share it with as many people as you can and you get lots of people outside to tell you that they like it too there's even a competition for the inner parts of our lives. So if I eat something really good, I can now take that and use it as a way to show the people in my world what I'm doing, have them opine on it, and then measure what I am doing with the food that I have based on the likes that I got. So if I go away on vacay and I take a picture of myself and I get a thousand likes and then I'm home and I show a picture of my Frappuccino and I get only 50 likes, I am now comparing the amount of feedback from my environment in my inner life 
I had a friend of mine who was an influencer, an influencer, an, uh, an instant influence. That can you? Is that even a concept? And he said to me once, I'll never forget this. The guy, he's in for business. He started this Instagram, but the guy like, I mean, tens of thousands, if not multiple tens of thousands of followers. And he was making money off it. And he just stopped the whole thing. And he stopped the whole thing. I was like, wait, crazy? Like he's, he's, we were talking about it. He started this thing for his business. He's in some, whatever. I don't know. He's in some kind of business and he was using it and he was, he got tons of fans and followers and, and he went, when, every time he went, when he traveled to get people, it was awesome. And he said to me, I'll never forget this. He says, I was somewhere with my family and I had this moment. And my first thought was, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't capture this and send it to my fans. And then he said, wait, with my family, having a moment, what is with my fans? And his brain was like, are you crazy? You just had this moment, like something funny happened and you could have, you could have recorded that and you could have sent it out on your Instagram page. You know, you know, what kind of likes you would have gotten for that. You think this is crazy? This ain't crazy. I know people that can't go to a restaurant and order anything without taking a picture and sharing it with their fans. I know people like this. They, they don't know how they, there's no life. That is inner. I told you the story a hundred times about the rabbi who went into what's called the yichud room. I told you this story. Just to, just to hear a yichud room when you get when one gets married. Part of the process of getting married, in the, according to Jewish law, is you know you you do a bunch of different things, but the last thing you do through all the different things you do is you come out of the chuppah, you go into a room that is called a yichud room, which means an alone room. And the husband and wife, the newly husband and wife, have to spend time alone. There's no one that can come in. It's like a consummation, if you will, of the marriage spiritually. You're alone with your wife. That's like a statement. Because a man and woman shouldn't be alone together. It's a whole Jewish legal thing. And now that a man and woman shouldn't be alone, so to speak, now that they are, right, it's a sign of their marriage. So you literally, I mean, if you go to a Jewish wedding, you see this, they literally dance they dance the bride and groom into this room and then everybody like has to get away and they lock the door and you actually have what they call showmares, which are like guards. Like you point your two friends who guard the door. It's like the coolest thing. They dance you into this room, which is you and your, your, your bride. Everyone's dancing outside and the two guys, at least I picked my two friends, stood guard like this at the door, stood guard at the door like this. And me and my wife went into the room for like, I don't know, five minutes. And it was a very special moment. Wedding, and engagements, and the party, and the chuppah. And, uh, you get a moment. You get like a, a moment. Just you and your wife. You and your bride. And then you come out, and the party continues. I'm sure I told this to you. So Rabbi spoke about it. So his name is Rabbi Shai Shechter. He's a great guy. He spoke about this. He said that he got a call from a groom who was said he was in the room with his bride. They just got married. And as they're in the room, he notices that she's doing, she's pulled out her phone and she's, she's live streaming the two of them. This is the entire purpose of this custom from for thousands of years is just to be alone, to build a relationship that's inner. You're, you're married. You have to have something that's just the two of you. And this wonderful, beautiful, sweet, adorable bride who I've never seen or met, but I'm sure she's all of those things, has a whole bit of neuroplasticity that says, what's inner? Everything's outer. This is my most inner moment with my husband, the first moment in marriage that we can have something that's ours. Hold on, I got an idea. Let me live stream this on my page because everything's outer results great people are inner don't get fooled by whether a guy makes the cover of a page don't get fooled don't get fooled by outer people
They're good people. The greatest people are inner. And you don't know them. You see someone walking down the street, you don't know. They're heroes. They're quieter about who they are. They know that the battle of life is about self. They're big people. Watch for them and look for them. And we have to be like them. That's how you, and then if it comes out, it comes out. It, it just comes out. All right. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Have an amazing day, everybody. With God's help, I look forward to seeing you manana.